Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geoecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to discuss about biomes. So basically, we are going to talk about concept and classification of biomes in this session and further ahead in other lectures we will be coming up with individual biomes in details and interaction of human beings with nature and also about adaptations. So please like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for the further updates. Now, the first question is, what is a biome? So let's answer this question in a way which has been clearly defined. So the word biome, let's go by the word first. It was suggested by the ecologist Frederick Edward Clements in the year 1916, which referred to the word biotic community. So biotic community was given a term biome in 1916. Then a biome is an area of the planet. Remember, it is talking about a geographical area of the planet that can be classified according to the plants and animals, that is flora and fauna that live in it. It is that simple to understand that it is a particular geographical area on the planet which has uniqueness of plants and animals living in it. Temperature, soil and amount of light. These are the abiotic components remember so temperature soil and amount of light together with water okay that helps determine the life forms in a particular biome so these are the major factors that are responsible for creation of a particular kind of biome on the earth surface then a biome is different from an ecosystem okay so remember this ecosystem is different and biome is different so how is it so let's understand that ecosystem is the interaction of living and non-living things that we have learned in the previous lectures. So it is the interaction that makes the ecosystem. Okay, then biome is what? It is a specific geographic area. That is the difference. When this ecosystem is linked to a particular area, then it can be called as a biome. It means biome is a geographical concept, not just a biological or a natural concept. So remember, biome is to a pertain pertaining to a particular geographical area and the species living there. Okay. So remember the biotic component in a unique area on the earth's surface is what is a biome. So a biome can be made up of many ecosystems. That is the basic crux of the matter. So one biome may have several ecosystems within it. So for example, an aquatic biome, if I say, it can contain ecosystems such as coral reefs that are a separate kind of entity. They, are, they have their own working and functioning and a kelp forest as well. So remember that a biome may have several ecosystems and biome is necessarily a geographical concept. Okay. Now, evolution of the concept of biomes. Let's understand the timeline, the chronology of the evolution of this concept of biomes. How did we evolve this concept? So let's understand it historically once. So in 5th century before Christ, if we say first notion of the global climatic zonation by a Greek scholar Parmenides. So remember, this was the first idea of global climatic zonation that came in 5th century BC. That is evident. Then come to this 1792. Recognition of influence of climate on global distribution of vegetation. I'm just marking important events taking from the beginning to the end. So 1792 what happened? It was recognized the influence of climate on global vegetation distribution by Wildenau. Then 1805 geography as a subject matter, biogeography as a subject matter was formalized and the contributions of Alexander von Humboldt and von Plant. That is important in terms of elevational zonation that they did. In 1899 what we see happens is formulation of global zonation of soils by Dokushev. So global zonation of soils come at the end of 19th century and first global climatic classification that is very much important. We are going to discuss this in detail in climate section as well. The Koppen's climatic classification was in the first segment of our 20th century by Koppen. So first mention of the term biome comes in 1916-17 exactly if you say as this particular term representing 
बायोटिक कम्युनिटी बाय क्लेमेंट्स नाउ न्यू ग्लोबल क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ क्लाइमेट जोन्स वॉज डन बाय थॉनफेट सो थॉनफेट डिड इट इन नाइनटीन ओके so now look at koppen's classification in the first decade of the 20th century and then again thornwet who does this classification of climatic zones and 1935 again a new concept that was introduced by ag tansley that is the concept of ecosystem so i hope you're getting this evolution of the concepts that gradually put together to the idea of biomes now 1939 what we see here is recognition of biome as a large scale concept okay by clements and sheffer so what do they say that ecosystem is the basic unit of any biome so in a single biome there are many ecosystems or there can be more than one ecosystem right then in 1943 what we see is the concept of biotic province now again the aerial expanse was done by dias in 1943 as biotic province a unique biota in a particular province okay now 1945 what do we see first record of the term evolution of biome by the great ecologist ep odum in 1945 here is a landmark in 1945 because the first record of term evolution of biome is there then 1976 what happened eco region concept came by bailey So remember the concept of eco region again the regional synthesis was linked to the ecology then 1995 eco zone by schlutz so eco region eco zone all these concepts are gradually evolving 96 what we see bioclimatic zonation of europe then what we see in 2001 biome was defined as lump sum of all those eco regions okay so gradually people started the concept evolved in terms of addition or different viewpoints so that keep coming so eco regions combined to form a biome that was given in 2001 then food and agricultural organization did a ecological zonation in 2001 and in 2008 we have this post modern concept the anthropocentric concept that says anthropogenic biomes that is anthromes remember this is a key terminology coined by elise and raman kutty in 2008 so that took the world in terms of the concept that gave the world a new thing that was anthropogenic biomes and that's why it is just in the recent decade that all the researchers have become concentrated on the anthromes that is the biomes in which human beings are important now a new type of functional biome was again done in the research part by higgins and others in 2016 that was published so on all this evolution what we see from the ancient to the modern let's understand few characteristics so basic idea is that boundaries between biomes are not always sharply defined it means they are a transient boundary they travel from one to the other okay from instance what we see is There are sometimes transitional zones between grassland and forest biomes. We have already learnt about ecotone, isn't it? Now, coasts and wetlands are transition zones if we see between terrestrial and aquatic biomes. So biomes move as the climate changes. Remember the statement. It can be put as a question that elaborate a statement called biomes move as climate changes. So what is the linkage of biome with climate change? Let's look at this. Ten thousand years ago, what happened? part of north africa okay remember north africa where is it so what happened at north africa 10000 years ago it had lush green landscape cut by rivers that was there then what happened Hi- hippopotamus giraffe crocodiles were abundant in that particular area along with the forest this was just 10000 years ago then gradually what happened due to climate change the area completely dried out and today what we know that area as sahara desert that's the world's largest desert that's how biomes move that's how changes occur in accordance with the climate that's what the major concept is to understand how biomes change with the changing climate and that's why the study of biomes in present condition where we have climate change that is also anthropocentric climate change concepts are coming in so the study of biomes become pivotal for humanity classification is the next segment of our 
today's session. So let's understand the classification of biomes. Now look at this, how NASA has classified it on its website in the Earth Observatory. So they have a mission biome saying these particular seven types of biome around the world. That is a broader classification by NASA. So what does it say? Tundra, shrubland, rainforest, grassland, desert, temperate, deciduous forest and coniferous forest. So this is a broader category on which this mission biomes, you can go to their website and check for yourself that they have classified this. Let's look at the traditional to the modern concept of the classification of biomes. So not all scientists classification of biomes are done in the same way by all scientists. So remember, not every scientist on, is on the same page. There is difference in opinions and difference in classification as well. Now, some use broader classifications and count as few as six biomes, okay? This is majorly accepted if you want to see, see that. So forest, grassland, freshwater, marine, desert and tundra. So many a times people combine this freshwater marine into just aquatic, okay? And others group into terrestrial. So let's see, other scientists use more precise classifications and list dozens of different biomes. So let's see, for example, they consider different kinds of forests to be different biomes okay that is another way of classification what is that tropical rainforest that are warm and wet throughout the year then temperate deciduous okay cold winters warm summers seasonal differences and then we have taiga which are colder regions dominating part okay so they have fir spruce all such kind of forests so this is another classification on the basis of forest biomes now Let's look at that there are various types of biomes. The exact number of biomes, is it calculated? No, the exact number of biomes in this world is still not known. It's still being classified and reclassified. Okay, so let's understand the basic idea that biome includes deserts, different types of forests, polar regions, national parks, bird sanctuaries, zoos, aquatic life, and so many things, isn't it? A diversity of things that is there in a biome. So based on certain similarities, okay, remember here this is the key point that based on certain similarities and to make the classification simple to understand for us, for people, for readers, okay, for common person, the biomes are main groups basically according to predominant vegetation and adaptation of organisms. That's where comes our topic in the coming lectures that we will be discussing this adaptation in different biomes of the vegetation, of the animals, of human beings. This is what we have to discuss in upcoming lectures. Then let's understand the two different types of biomes in a broader category are terrestrial and land. That is the terrestrial and basically not land but the ocean if you say. So one is terrestrial means land based and the other is the aquatic biome. So pardon me for the spelling mistake here. It should be uh, the water, the ocean part. So the major types of terrestrial biomes are, look at this, such a huge list. Tundra, desert, savanna, mountains, grasslands, rainforest, polar region, okay, tropical forest, taiga, boreal forest, northern conifer forest, Mediterranean scrub forest, temperate deciduous forest. So these are so many classification of what is there on the land. Okay, so major part is terrestrial biome of which these are the components. These are several types. Now let's look at the aquatic biomes that are most stable ecosystems in nature. Remember, aquatic biomes are more stable. With the absence of water, most of the life forms would not be there. That's why where there is water, there is life. So it is more stable. So as much as about 80 to 85% of the atmospheric oxygen and food production is contributed to the presence of water. Okay. So what happens? There are two major types of aquatic biomes. As I said, grouping of that. So marine and freshwater biomes. Now in upcoming lectures, we are going to discuss each of those major biomes in terms of its adaptation and human environment interaction in those biomes. So what are those biomes that we are going to discuss? Ocean and coastal biome. That is one separate section we'll be discussing. Then we'll discuss a desert biome situation, adaptation in desert condition. Then we'll be discussing tundra biome, okay? And the adaptations and issues in tundra biome. Then grassland biome. So we'll be discussing about the grasslands, the adaptation in grassland biome and the mountain biome that is again another important 
because altitude is another classification that leads to different kinds of climate and also have a uniqueness there so this is what we are going to come in the future so please keep watching and subscribe to my channel the geoecologist and remember to understand the concepts thoroughly so that we can understand in upcoming lectures about adaptations in various biomes so thank you so much for watching stay safe keep learning thank you so much